Raise your hand if you know what season it is. Okay, you can put your hands down. It's like everyone. You're right. It's college app season. <laughs> so, yeah, it's winter too. <laughs> nice. So usually it's the seniors that start worrying about college apps and SAT scores and what they're going to be doing for the rest of their lives. At uni, university, high school, we like doing things a little earlier. From starting the day a little earlier than every other school in the district to starting to worry about our lives a year early. So last summer when I was a sophomore, a lot of my friends were taking an SAT class. Everyone, it seemed, except for me. I asked one of my friends why she was so worried. And she told me that she had to get a really high score. And I asked her, why? To get into a good college, of course. Well, why? To get a high paying job. For what? To make lots of money. Why? To be happy. And I was like, that's a lot of work to be happy. But I realized that I was like that too. I had the mindset that unless I was the best at every class, I would never be the best at anything. That this was my passion, learning and working hard so that one day I could get into a good college and be happy. I wanted to take an SAT class where I would have been bored out of my mind sitting in that little room for hours and hours. But I couldn't because I was already committed to a trip to Taiwan to teach English to middle schoolers there. I was kind of annoyed. Why did I have to go somewhere I didn't want to go with people I didn't even know when all of my friends could be back at home? During those two weeks, I stayed out of school with concrete floors and no air conditioning. And that's where I slept, on concrete floors with all of the windows open. And it was still like 100 degrees. I was always so sweaty and it was so uncomfortable. Another problem I had was the lack of good communication between my students and I. Because my Mandarin isn't so good and my students didn't like to speak English. I was always so angry and frustrated at them, and whenever I asked myself why I was there, I couldn't answer. I had to try my best though, because the camp coordinators really wanted us to build deeper relationships with these students. One day after class, I asked one of my girls if I could walk back with her, and she said okay. So we were walking and we stopped at a McDonald's, where she started telling me more about who she was. She told me that she was very academically oriented, Asian stereotype, right? But she also told me that she had a lot of dreams of her own, a lot of things that she wanted to do for herself, not what her parents wanted, what her friends expected of her. And I realized that that's why I was there too. I was looking for something that I could do for me and not for anybody else around me. We talked for about an hour and then I had to go back to the school. She offered to walk back with me and it was already raining by then. It was so slippery and I was wearing those cheap $2 Old Navy flip flops. It was so slippery, but we were running anyways. And all of a sudden, I fell. Oh, that was really loud. Uh, so there I was in the middle of heavy traffic and heavy rain with this girl I barely knew in front of me. I thought she would turn around and laugh. But she turned towards me, reached out her hand, and said, here, I'll help you up. You know that feeling you sometimes get when the world just feels so right? I felt like that. Because this girl, this stranger I barely knew, could make me feel so warm and fuzzy inside. Then I started to understand why I was there, and I also started to have fun. During those two weeks, teaching, serving, and getting to know a group of about 15 girls taught me more than I could have ever learned in that little room where I would have been bored out of my mind. I learned that we're lucky to have an education. They can touch the heart of a stranger without even knowing it, and that most importantly, I had a passion for people. I believe that if I let my peers influence me, I would have gotten that 2400 eventually. But honestly, a 2400 can't make you feel warm and fuzzy inside any longer than an Oreo cookie can satisfy your hunger. That's about five minutes. Now I know that my situation is special because my situation is mine. It's different from yours. But I think we've all experienced it. Your parents tell you that violin is your passion. So you practice every day and get calluses and it becomes your passion. Or your friends all play football. So you work out daily and it becomes your passion. The thing is, your hobbies, your friends' hobbies, the school you end up going to, your SAT score, or even the clothes you wear don't define who you are. Doing what you love to impact those whom you love is what really matters. Now, no one else can tell you what it is, and you can't take a test to find out. Because the thing about your passion is that it's yours. Thank you.